Hi guys, welcome to Less Is More. My name is Dan Wellman and today we'll be looking at the range of different colour functions that Less gives us. Less exposes functions that allow us to increase or decrease the lightness and the saturation of a colour, fade a colour in or out, and decrease or increase a colour by a specified number of degrees. And we can also mix colours. So let's see this in action. In our less file, we've got a range of different shades of blue here. So what we can do is keep our, our base blue here and the rest of the shades of blue, we should be able to generate using the color functions. So the dark blue, yeah, this is gonna be quite straightforward. So we can use the darken function. So the syntax for a function is the function name followed by brackets and the values that we put inside the brackets are the values that the function operates on. So the first argument of the darkened function is the color. So in this case, that is our blue. And we we'll use the blue variable. We could use the hex code there as well, but seeing as we've got the variable, there's not much point. And if we darken that by around 8%, that should give us roughly the color that we want. So we'll just crunch that. And if we take a look at the example site, yeah, it looks exactly the same. Nothing has gone horribly wrong. So yeah, that, that dark blue, that should be fine. So if we were to compare the hex color that's generated by, by the darken function, um, we'd probably find that they, it was different than the original hex code that we just replaced, but the difference is imperceptible, at least to my eyes. So for the purpose of this example, they are close enough. Um, so using these color functions is a great way of coming up with a theme in less. So if you want a blue website, you can start out with blue and then create various other shades of blue based on your base color. So we've done it kind of back to front in this example because we're working with an existing style sheet. So we're having to try to, to match the colors as best we can using the color functions. Um, but if we were starting out from scratch, then it would be, it would be much easier and much quicker just to run a couple of functions on our base color and generate a whole range of different shades. So using the other color functions is done in exactly the same way. We just specify the function that we'd like to use the color that we're transforming, which, as you've seen, may be a variable or it may be a hex color. And as the second argument, we specify the amount we want to transform it by. So most of the functions, the saturation functions, the brightness and the fade functions, they all take percentages. The spin function takes a purely numerical argument. And this represents the degrees that the color wheel should be spun. And the mix function that we'll look at in a moment actually takes two colors and a percentage. So the format of most of the functions is very, very similar. So now that we've used the darken function, you should be able to use any of the other color functions with ease. So we can also mix the functions if we want. Um, so for our, our pale blue variable, for example, we can't just lighten or desaturate the base blue because that will never give us the right shade of blue but we can approximate the pale blue by both lightening and desaturating it. So we can do something like this. So the first argument, remember, is the color. So instead of specifying a color directly, we're gonna specify another function. And then the first argument of the desaturate function is the blue that we're operating with. So if we set 25%, then it will be the base blue will be desaturated by 25%. And then that value will be lightened. So if we do it for about 35%, then that will give us roughly the shade of pale blue that we need. So we'll crunch that. And if we go back to the web page, the blue that we've just made is actually the the very, very light pale blue um, that is used as a text shadow there. So as you can see, it looks exactly as it did before. So yeah, once again, it's probably not exactly the same hex code that it started out, but for the purposes of this tutorial, I think it's probably close enough. 
Okay, so in the same way that we've used two color functions to generate our pale blue, we can use more functions if we want. So further nesting is also supported. So to generate our mid blue, we could do something like this. So we'll specify um, the spin function first of all, which spins the color wheel by a specified number of degrees. Um, and the first argument again is the color, but we'll specify another function, we'll use lighten. Um, and then for the first argument of lighten, we'll use desaturate. And then the first argument of desaturate is our blue. And we'll desaturate by 25%. And then we'll lighten by 17%. And we'll spin the color wheel by just one degree. So we'll crunch that. And if we take a look at the template file ourself, uh, the blue that we've just generated is gonna be the blue used as the borders of these boxes here. So if we do a quick refresh, not a find. Yeah, I mean, to me that looks exactly the same. So once again, the hex code is probably very slightly different, but yeah, it's close enough. So the color functions are really, really awesome. Um, we'll just take a quick look at the mix function as well. So we've got blue and red variables defined. Maybe we might wanna make a purple. So we can generate a purple by mixing the red and the blue. So the mix function takes three arguments. So the first argument is a color, so we use our blue. And the second argument is also a color, so we'll use our red. And the third argument is a percentage, and it's the percentage of how much of the first color should be within the generated color. So if we say 50-50, we'll use 50%. So the color that we produce should be 50% blue, and that will leave 50% for the red as well. So if we want to actually generate that, we'll just create a new purple class. And when we compile that, so we better just check that that hex is actually a shade of purple. So if we plug it into Photoshop, yeah, yeah, I mean, there's no denying that that's purple. So that's how the mix function works. Super awesome. So the functions that we've looked at so far are all setters. So they take values and they return values based on the original values. As well as these functions for setting colors, Less also provides methods for just returning colors. So it provides getters as well. So if we wanted to get the saturation of a color, we could just use the saturation function, like this. And that would return the amount of saturation in our blue. And as well as saturation, there are functions for getting the hue, lightness, and the alpha channel of a color as well. So in this part, we looked at the range of color functions provided by Less. We saw that Less provides functions for both manipulating colors and for getting information about colors. In the next part, we'll take a look at the mathematical functions that Less provides. Thanks for watching.